chair now recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Stearns. Yes, unanimous consent to revise and extend. Without objection. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in the hopes of appealing to the common sense of my colleagues in the United States Senate. In a few days, they will vote on whether or not Ben Bernanke will serve a second term as Federal Reserve Chairman. For the good of American taxpayers and the greater economy, his nomination should be rejected. As Chairman of the Federal Reserve, he has intervened in the financial market in an unprecedented way. He has instituted un-American policies that have distorted our free market economy, such as picking winners and losers and the creation of too big to fail. Both Republicans and Democrats alike have argued that the Fed itself was a significant factor in creating the worst economic and financial crisis our nation has faced in a generation. Where is the justification in reconfirming Ben Bernanke? Under him, interest rates were kept too low for too long as the Fed simultaneously increased the money supply and economic bubbles were created. In 2006, financial experts throughout the nation pointed out that the housing bubble was collapsing. Yet the Fed took no action until it was too late and tens of thousands of families found themselves in foreclosure. Another major factor in the economic meltdown were the questionable financial transaction by the holding companies of the largest banks and Wall Street firms. It is clear now that the Fed abdicated its role as a regulator of these entities. Just last month, Mr. Bernanke admitted in front of the Senate Banking Committee that, quote, in the area where we had responsibility, the bank holding companies, we should have done more, end quote. The irony of his comments are that the Fed has plenty of power and authority to deal with this kind of abuses. We have seen in the financial industry and within the housing market this ability for him to act, but he refused to use it. Under the leadership of Mr. Bernanke, the Fed chose to ignore the abuses going on in the mortgage industry, particularly with subprime loans. The Fed also chose to ignore Wall Street's risky off-balance sheets transactions that created a domino effect that rippled through our economy. Bloomberg reported that the Fed itself entered into trillions in off-balance sheet transactions last year, but the Fed's own Inspector General has not even attempted to audit or to investigate these transactions. Astoundingly, Mr. Bernanke is now advocating that Congress grant the Fed even greater regulatory power. We need to audit the Federal Reserve now. In discussing Mr. Bernanke's failing as Fed Chairman, it is important to point out that he served on the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve from 2002 to 2005 before coming Chairman. He is no novice, yet he ignored distress calls from our imminent financial meltdown. And Mr. Bernanke has not been forthcoming in explaining to Congress and the American people who, in the private sector, the Fed has chosen to subsidize with American tax payers' dollars, and for what reason and what amount. Mr. Bernanke has also been unable to fully explain and account for $500 billion the Fed has lent to central banks in Europe and Asia. Instead, he continues to hide behind the long-standing premise that monetary policy should be free from political pressure, coupled with the convenience of the Fed not being a public agency, and thus not being obligated to publicly account for its action. Mr. Speaker, it is not his money. It belongs to the American taxpayers. Under Mr. Bernanke's leadership, the Fed even strove to keep the details of AIG's overpayments to its counterparts secret, as recently revealed by a newly disclosed set of emails from the New York Fed. The emails clearly demonstrate the kind of culture that Bernanke oversaw at the Fed, one of secrecy and willingness to stifle important public disclosure pertaining to the financial crisis. But again, it is not his money. After the difficult financial year we've had, common sense dictates a change in leadership at the Federal Reserve. Reconfirming Mr. Bernanke to a second term is like putting a stamp of approval on the health of our unstable economy while guaranteeing more of the same failed policies. More of the same is not the solution to our economic downturn and crisis in the financial markets. We need a complete departure from the failed policies of the past Mr. Bernanke steered our financial system directly into the rocks. Should we really put him at the helm again? No. Gentleman yields back the balance of his time. 